Good morning, welcome, welcome everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy, and today I'm going to be giving you some prediction readings for the 1st of November. Yes, November, guys. I hope you had a good Halloween last night. All went well, particularly over in those places where you really get into it. My daughter actually did a bit of trick or treating with some friends last night. I am out here with the doggos. Sophie's here, Spockets hiding behind the chair. I don't know what that's about. Um, it's not a bad day here, we've got a little bit of cloud cover. Got a bit spoilt by the sun. It's been so beautiful here, spring. Um, a little bit of admin, guys. Welcome anybody new to the channel. Please feel free to comment. We chat to each other here. Hit those like buttons, guys, as well. You know what to do. Um, first off, a little bit of admin, guys. Not a lot. Um, we've got the CV inquiry going on. Yes, the COVID inquiry has been happening in Australia, apparently. And the report hmm, is slamming the inconsistent and harsh restrictions particularly in Melbourne. Uh, they were talking about the most locked down city in the world other than Panda. Two years locked in your house. Can you imagine being locked in your house for two years? Uh, and they shut the playgrounds. You couldn't even leave your house to exercise. Nothing, you were just stuck living in a shoebox, which hmm, seems to be the direction our lives are headed a little bit, doesn't it guys? But what's gonna come of it? Absolutely nothing. Who's gonna be held accountable? Absolutely no one. So what's the point of using taxpayer money again to do an inquiry when nothing comes of it? I don't get it, guys. Oh, cheers, everyone. I've got a smoothie this morning, a banana protein smoothie of some sort. Mmm, gummy. Sophie's also got a new costume on. So cute. It's a little rashy. It's so adorable. You'll probably see her in a minute wandering around. Um, oh, the other thing we have to talk about, guys, is the floods in Spain. What on earth? What's that little ditty quote, the rain in Spain felt mainly on the plane? What is with the rain in Spain? Holy crap, guys. Have you seen that video footage? There's hundreds of people dead, apparently, or at least 140, I think. It's horrifying. If you haven't seen the footage, go and have a look. Does not feel normal, guys. I know we question the weather a lot here, but it's bad, really bad. Guys, I think I'm gonna have to move this table a tiny bit. Hopefully I don't knock your camera over because the sun's just come out and I've realized it's nearly on my camera. Um, oh, there's Sophie showing off her outfit. <laughs> so take care anybody around those regions in Spain. It's pretty horrific. I did say there'd be a lot more rain and mm, potential flooding around the globe and it seems to be happening, but on a really huge frightening scale, doesn't it guys? And the other thing, speaking of water, our water rates are going up in, well, they're starting in Sydney. So the water rates are going up. I'm sure this will be happening, no doubt, in China, the UK, blah, blah, blah. Another good way to make money out of the poor old taxpayers. So the rates are going up, water rates in Oz. It just never ends. Everything keeps going up, but what's not going up? Pay and people's wages. No movement there, I notice. Oh, unless you're a VIP CEO of a ginormic company or you're involved with the government somehow, they seem to always get their little pay rises. We know Elbow just had one recently, blah, blah, blah. Goes on and on, doesn't it, guys? So unfair. They don't even care nor hide it from us, do they? Unreal. Uh, anyway. Wonder what the fallout will be with this Starmageddon with those UK protests. Be interesting to see what happens and how he reacts to this because I don't think he's come out and said much so far because he's gone into shock. Like I said, he wouldn't have expected zillions of people to stand up and fight back against the government. How dare they? Um, anyway, let's start the reading, guys, and we'll see what comes up. Oh, I'm just getting people are standing. They're, they're going to continue to stand in the UK. Ah. Oh. <laughs> they want the government to collapse in the UK. We know you do. <laughs> Everybody's willing that on. I think even us awake BS detectors in other countries want your star again to topple off his perch. Um, I am getting that. I'm seeing the people still standing up. The energy's still rising in the UK. It's really great. All right. Oh, there's Sophie. They're showing me star again, and he's like, Oh, it's so glary with the sun, guys. <laughs> it's just all cloudy, and now it's all sunny. Um, not complaining though about the sun. I know you guys will be appreciating it too if you're living in the UK. The grey skies you've had. Um, 
It's the only star Armageddon shoulder to shoulder with other people. He must have a pretty good support team around him that's helping keep him propped up um, with the agenda that he's rolling out. Sophie. Um, I'm just getting that. He's shoulder to shoulder. There's people supporting him um, on either side. It's kind of, I'm getting this. So he's got people around him who are banding together, coming together to try and support his agenda. He, he's not the... Oh, we know he's a puppet working for the puppet masters. But he's also got people around him who are helping to implement his... Well, garbage, we would call it. And these could be people like mayors, um, local representatives of the councils and things like this that they're also on the page with him. So he has got a little team and a crew of people around him supporting him because it's showing me he's got pretty square shoulders. This is what I'm getting, I Minnie's. Mean, um, like he's, he's trying to stay in his, you think of someone standing strong with square shoulders, he's trying to stay in his strong energy like I can deal with this. Uh, meanwhile, he's run off to 10 Downing Street after the protests and he's having to reassess and work out damage control. What am I going to do? But he has got support with him on this to come up with new ideas, how they're going to, I would say, manipulate and handle uh, the protesters now. Um, do we hit them with harsh measures? For example, if they come again, do we wrap all this up with the, you know, SWAT police or whatever they call them? Um, and all this kind of thing and horses and just shut all this down really early. Do we allow them to have their free speech? He's, he's going through the motions of what he's going to do about the next kind of rally. But the thing is, the rallies are getting bigger. There's more and more people. And I don't think there's enough police to kind of police these things. They weren't prepared at the last one. It was a very thin line of police that the people could have just toppled over very easily. But they were very calm and composed. Usually it's the old police that kick it off first anyway, isn't it? With the old capsicum spray and all that. All right, let's keep going. Berlin. Um, we keep getting Germany's rising, but I feel like Berlin's going to... Um, there's going to... Things are going to get a little out of control in Berlin. I am feeling that. I feel like things are going to get a little bit maybe crazy in Berlin. Um, maybe a little volatile. Um some ugly scenes maybe some riots and this kind of thing the looting shop fronts um a little crazy i'm just getting that for berlin um but it'll be around the protests of course against government oh yeah hello sprocket nice backside what's with my dogs gotta show you backside they're pretty chilled today aren't they he just stands sometimes sprocket just stands and freezes he must listen because listening would be one of his biggest senses other than smell and eating um listening would be his other one i would say he loves sitting outside and listening to the birds in the mornings really early oh he's gonna sit in the dirt now and do a sophie <laughs> oh they're showing me america and and they're showing me trump and he's calling the mexican border gates the gates of hell that's what he's calling them. Um, I call it the Mexican border gate scandal because Biden opened them, flung open the border gates and let every crim, everybody from all around the world to come in and virtually just, well, hopefully not destroy America. But he allowed this to happen. Um, and Trump is virtually calling them the gates of hell. He's let hell in. And, and I think he's right. And it's gonna be a process if Trump gets him fingers that he does. Um, Oh, I get, keep getting Trump triumphant for some reason, that quote, that fingers. Um, I'm just getting that, that he's calling the gates of hell because he's got to, he's going to have to reverse all of this and drag people out of the country um, and get hold of these people who have probably, well, most of them have no paperwork. They have no names. They change their names. They lie. Um, they could be rapists, murderers, God knows what, terrorists, all the above. Um, so he knows he's got a hell of a job ahead if he gets in and he wants to get these, well, bad immigrants, not all of them, they're not all bad, we know that, he's got a hell of a job. So he's calling it the, oh, excuse me, God, the gates of hell. 
which is about right because it's really caused chaos for especially the people living along the borders in America. It's it's totally disrupted their lives, hasn't it? Um, all right, let's keep going. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, I'm getting China, Panda, we call them here, is on the move. Um, they're creeping, creeping, creeping forward. I keep saying to you, they're starting to take over a lot of other islands in the Pacific. We've got Samoa, they're working on PNG, which is Papua New Guinea. We know they're getting their little mitts into everyone and they're still, oh, what's saying, terrorizing, um, God, what's it called? Taiwan, isn't it? They're still terrorizing Taiwan um, and, and threatening and intimidating. And they're gonna start doing this, I've said it all year, with other countries, they're gonna do the intimidation. Uh, some of them, they're in the waters. Where was that the other day? Their ship was in the waters I told you about and they had to be um, chased out of the waters. Um, this is the kind of thing they're gonna keep doing, the big intimidation. <laughs> Oh, sorry guys, hey fever. Still, um, they're actually still working on this intimidation because they still want the power and control of the world, as we know. They're getting their foot into Australia so easily because of elbow. Like, the thing is though with, with Panda, they're not like a threat as in danger. They're just um, an energy threat because they push and they push and they push um, to try and squash other countries and break well, all these little islands and people um, using their like military power is how they do it. Um, and maybe with their astronauts now going to train to go to the moon, that'll put a bit of a threat on all the other countries as well. <laughs> oh guys, don't even get me started on the whole moon thing. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I'm getting these wellness camps. We all had these lovely wellness camps built during the CV event. And I feel like they're now gonna to start to be used for youth detention. Um, we've got the huge crime problems here in Oz. Um, I know it's global. So they may, mind you, we know these wellness camps are sitting there empty, spent millions on them and nothing's been happening. We all thought we were gonna be marched off because we weren't jibber jabbered into these wellness camps. What a name, wellness camps. So I am feeling that these could be used for the youth crime. There's not enough um, spaces in the youth detention centres. So they might look at using these places as rehabilitation for the youth crime, something like that. This could be in Australia, but it could be also global because I'm sure you had some wellness camps built wherever you guys were to during the big, mm, scary pandemic. I'm getting crime is on the rise, crime is increasing um, to the levels that it's out of control now. People aren't feeling safe in their own homes. And when that's happening, it's, well, as we know here, it brings fear, it brings uncertainty. Um, people are stealing, people, and people don't have the money to pay their insurances for house and contents insurance. They don't have the money to replace the items. So we know this is just becoming a huge, huge deal for people who are being, well, having, theft <laughs> happened to them it, especially if you think of cars getting stolen which is happening here on the gold coast in brisbane etc but every day um people haven't got the money to replace those vehicles especially if they've got all their tools in them like it's say a builder or something like that often you're not covered <laughs> often you're not <laughs> a magpie nearly landed on sophie's head <laughs> Tirada's um, birds are here, Chungus <laughs> and his partner have come for food. Um, I'll have to feed them later because I'm in the middle of a video. Don't they know I'm shooting a video? Chungus, I can't feed you. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to, so people don't have, people aren't paying their car insurance. We talked about this the other day, how expensive everything's getting with insurance, car insurance, etc. Well, this is what's happening, people aren't insured. So then what? They can't get to their job, they can't work. These are the things that just continuously keep happening. This would be happening in the UK, be happening in China, it'll be happening everywhere. Um, so uh, it's a big issue now. People are just getting, now people are sick of being downtrodden, not only by their government, but then they're dealing with all this crime and this craziness as well. 
it's really upsetting if you think about it. The fact that people can't even afford insurance anymore. And this is a lot of people apparently. Um, I know people scrape the barrel because you know you have to have your house and contents insurance, your car insurance if you can. A lot of people can't. A lot of people just can't. They have to eliminate something in order to make their house repayments. So let's ditch the car insurance and then your car's off driving up the road with somebody, 14 year old kid that doesn't give a rat's razoo that then just dumps it and tortures it or whatever. Oh, it's mental. This world is, what is happening guys? All right, let's see if there's something else. Oh, I'm getting next year, they're really gonna push the global warming. Ah, oh, so guys, if you know. They're really going to push the global warming. Um, we know that constantly, constantly, just endlessly talking about climate change. We can't stand it, can we, guys? Because we know it's all BS. Because we know they're all flying around on their private jets. They don't give a rip, um, all these people who are rolling the agenda out. Um, but I am getting that. We're going to get more about global warming. Oh, and why aren't we all playing our part? We all have to come together, remember, guys? and make the changes in order to have a better life for our kids' future, our grandkids. You know, all this garbage we're gonna be fed. So there's more of this definitely global, renewable energy, renewable this and that. God, there's a show here called The Block. I'm sure you've probably heard about it. And they, they spend that much money on it, it's insane. I'm sure you've got them, those um, DIY house shows. And they've got the big solar panels all going on the roof. It cost an absolute mozza. And they've all got the best batteries in their garage and all the electric chargers. Everything's being built now with the electric chargers. So you can plug in your electric car and you just think, no thanks. I don't want all that crap in my house. And I also think about it sometimes, guys. Like, just all that energy flow and that vibrational oh, electric, more electric electricity and just... I don't know, what are these frequencies doing to us sometimes? I do wonder these things. And also, would you want the big um, solar battery thing in your house? I mean, it'd be a bit scary enough having it on the outside of your house. Remember I've been telling you guys about the big recalls they've been having here about the house batteries on the houses for solar? There's been these recall ads about the dangers of these um, great big solar batteries catching fire. So I'm not thinking I'd want them in my garage, but anyway. Everyone's different, aren't they? I'm sure a lot of people will get on board with it, but it seems like every house now, even a few motels I've driven past lately have all got the EV charging stations and things like this. It's just it's just starting to creep in, creep in, creep in. Oh, the old dystopian nightmare begins, guys. It's happening. Let's see if there's one more thing and then we'll pull some cards. I'm just getting told that happiness is not an illusion. Happiness is something that you can create. And happiness, they're saying, comes from within. We create our own happiness. Um, feelings can be um, made by us. We don't have to sit in darkness, fear, anxiety, worry, all those awful things that contract your body. We have to keep opening up. That's why things like going for a walk, being out in nature, hanging out with your pets. My two over there have collapsed in the sun. <laughs> Just looking at the birds, feeding the birds, um, doing anything. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, just to get your mind on other things. So you're not, like I said, in that contracted state. So your body's freer and your energy flows a lot um, more easily. It's more comfortable, isn't it, guys? All right. Hang on a minute. God, I'm getting New Zealand rising. <laughs> What's happening over there? Maybe it's coming, guys. I'm seeing a bit of movement, though. Oh, let's hope the UK protests start to rub off on everybody. Oh, sorry, guys. I forgot to post that Jab Cinder video. I will post it today, I promise. Um, I'll definitely post in my Facebook about her during the Jab Wheel. And now that she got damed, it was actually about her getting damed. Um, being Dame Jabsinda by Prince William and then it had all these snippets about all the wonderful things she did during the lockdowns. <laughs> oh god, I will post it. Sorry guys, I did forget. Um, Alright, let me see if there's one more thing. Fingers that New Zealand stands up to certain things. We know he's not going to do everything because he's trying to financially in improve New Zealand but I still feel like the renewables and that he's, he's caught in the climate change global warming 
agenda, unfortunately, because he keeps going to all the lovely, important meetings. All right. Oh, they're showing me Australia here down in Oz. You know how I tell you, they're always gutless wonders and no one stands up except the same old freedom fighter, maverick, rebel, braveheart bikers that we are, renegades, etc. Um, I'm getting that Australia wants to stand up, but they're still sitting in their chairs. It's interesting, isn't it? People are waking up in Australia, but they're still sitting in their chairs trying to do the right thing. You know, they're trying to be the good little schoolboys and schoolgirls and do the right thing for the government. Mm. Um, isn't it funny how people just don't have that rebellion in them? Some people are just goody two-shoes a bit, aren't they? Um, well, I'm getting that. They're still sitting down. They haven't, they haven't got the courage to stand up yet. Oh, I doubt Australia will ever get the courage to stand up. They're hopeless. Oh, my God. Um, no one has stood up here since four years ago when we had our huge freedom marches. And they were people that came all from all over Australia to Canberra, the capital city, and there were thousands upon thousands of people there, but they were from all around the nation. So it's like, uh, we need people to do that again. But we're not doing it, are we guys? We've had enough, we've stepped out of all that nonsense now because that's not the vibrational frequency we're living on. Um, just like David Icke tells you. Um, I watched another video the other day that was really good. I can't remember what it was. I'll get back to you guys. Actually, some of you have been giving me some music lately that I'm going to look into as well. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of music research because I know we love our music here. All right, um, let's pull some cards. The affirmations seem to be helping a little bit, don't they? Let's do that first. Mm. Cry. Oh, I need the glasses. These are small. The earth never held back rain out of fear of looking weak. It releases when it needs to so that the sun can shine again. That makes sense. You think about a cloud and when a cloud bursts, well, maybe not so much the clouds in Spain at the moment because that's a little bit too much crying. Um, but once the clouds drop the rain, this was when the weather was normal and not interfered with um and then they'd move on and then you'd get look at this the sunny day and crying also this is for us too it helps us release toxins and things out of our body crying's healthy so never feel worried about having a good cry guys the earth never held back rain out of fear of looking weak isn't that beautiful fear of looking weak and I know that's for a lot of you men out there you're always taught it's weak to cry women cry much easier than men don't we we cry quite, cry quite a lot. We release a lot of our tension and energy, don't we? Um, so have a good cry if you need it. Queen of the Moon Oracle. But that's also about the earth. Um, you think about rain too. It's very cleansing. When you have a nice, say, a really hot day. I know in Queensland you guys get really hot days. And then you get those big thunderstorms sometimes in the afternoon. It's very cleansing to have a big storm or a big downpour of rain. It just cleans all the gutters out and it freshens all the grass, comes green the next day. And whatever's in the rain um, certainly makes all the plants and everything happier and healthier in the trees, doesn't it? So it's very cleansing, but it also brings sort of new life, I guess you could say. Okay, what have we got? The Queen of the Moon Oracle. Oh, gratitude. Hmm. I guess that's when I look at that card. I always tell you, I'm not, I'm not big on the gratitude thing. But I think what they're saying is just, just be grateful the things that you're handed, um, the things that are right in front of you now, um, the gifts you've been handed. Sometimes I think too, as sensitive souls, intuitives, psychics, all those kind of things that we are, we're a little bit different. Sometimes we've always felt a bit weird and different. If you're here on this channel, for sure, you're already awake and you're fairly much on a spiritual path. Um, I think you've got to appreciate your gifts because it, it leads us, um, well, probably ahead of the pack. We see things before they happen. We talk about it all the time here. Um, we just have a knowing of things without even knowing or seeing. or uh, We don't even understand it half the time ourselves how we see these things, but we just do. So see that as a as a gift. Um, 
be grateful that you've got the gifts that you have guys because it does allow us to to prepare for things that are coming towards us it really does doesn't it oh sunrise oh look at that isn't that beautiful look how much energy the beautiful rabbit's got and the big sun and the clouds clearing i love that card it's really uplifting for today isn't it sunrise and as the sun rises there's always a sunset isn't that what they say that i do like that card meaning sunrise to me is that the light coming um the bright skies just people waking up to me that is which brings us a lot of joy doesn't it guys um let me see if there's anything to finish off with guys no i'm getting that song again Good morning, star shine. Oh, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Good morning, star shine. The earth says hello. You twinkle above us. You twinkle below. I told you my cousin who died recently used to play that on the trumpet when I was little. He was really good at the trumpet and he used to play that. Such a beautiful little song. I love that old song. And I'm also getting, of course, Coldplay. You're a sky full of stars, because you're a sky full of stars. Oh, I love that song. I love that song. Did you go and listen to the church's song, Starfish? I love that song too. That's the one I got the other day that I couldn't think of the name of it. It's Starfish. Um, it's a great song. Go listen to it. Let me see if there's one more thing. I'm getting this. Oh, I can't get to. Hang on. Oh, I'm getting this song. The sun ain't gonna shine anymore. Da 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 da. I just can't get to the rest of the words. Sorry, guys. Hang on. Let me see something else. You might recognise it. Sometimes the singing doesn't help, though, doesn't it? It's not easy to work the songs out for more lovely singing. Um, hmm. oh, I'm going to leave you with this today. We've had this before. Marsha Hines, absolutely beautiful song. She is an Aussie singer, absolutely stunning. Um, the song Shining. And I was shining, too bright to see, shining to everything. I don't know the words, but it is such a pretty song. She's got another song that I really love that I've had here before too, and I'm just trying to think what it is. Hang on a second. Um, it'll come to me in a sec. Wait on. Um, Marsha Hines. Oh, I know this song really well. I've got to give it to you because it's so beautiful. I've had it before, and I know you guys really love it as well. Oh. It's going to frustrate me now. She's got a song called Without You. That's really popular as well. Um, oh, I can't get the Shining song out of my head. Hang on a tick. Give me a sec. Oh, I wish I could think of the other song of hers. I absolutely love it. Um... I can even see the film clip, like I can see her in the film clip. Just give me a tip. I just don't know what to do with myself, I think it's called. I just don't know what to do. Like a summer rose, you need the sun and the rain. Oh, I think it's called that. I need your true love, babe, all the pain. I just don't know what to do with myself. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Go look it up, guys. Um, there you go. I need the sun and the rain. Oh, beautiful song. To connecting to the sun and the rain, I think, guys. All right, I'm going to leave you with that today. Marsha Hines. I just don't know what to do with myself. Absolutely magic, guys. I'm going to say goodbye for me and the doggo. Sophie, Spock, come and say goodbye. Come on. I'll see if I can get him over. Come on, Soph. Come on, Spock. Not gonna. I'll see if I can show it. Sprocket, come on, darling. Come and say hello. Sprocky, Sophie. 
No. Not good? No. Has Sophie in the new outfit? And there goes the bird. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. All right, go and listen to St. Marsha Hines. She's got the most amazing voice. Actually, last night, speaking of the voice, they had a really um, great special of John Farnham here, the guy that sings the voice. God, his voice was amazing. And it was footage that had never been seen before of him. And when he and Kylie Minogue did a concert in East Timor during the, um, the, the war and the militia and all that there, it was unbelievable footage of their concert. It really was. If you get a chance to see it somehow, I don't know, it might become a documentary, I'm guessing. Um, look out for it because it's an absolutely incredible show. All right, I'm going to say goodbye from Australia. Oh, I've got Sprocket here. I'm going to say hi, Sprock. Sprocky, say hello. He's saying hello, you doodle shy. Oh, he's funny, isn't he? He's a rat bag. All right, take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. Bye. Don't forget, though, like buttons, comment, and please consider subscribing. We'd love you to have you here. Take care. Bye, everyone.